Hi, my name is Brad Turnblum. I'm a professional freestyle jet skier from California. And I'm here today to teach you kind of the basics of impeller tuning for basically any uh, jet ski, wave runner, sea do, anything like that. All these fundamentals will be pretty much the same. Um, and this is basically going to go over how to tune it properly and what every different part does and how it affects the way that your jet ski is going to run in the water. So here is your basic impeller. This is a 160 millimeter pump. So this is a custom freestyle impeller and it is an 83 millimeter hub. And it currently measures, I think it's around 915 or something like that. So when you're looking at impellers, there's two numbers when you're going to order it or you're looking at it. The first number is always going to be the leading edge. So it's the angle that the first, let's call it inch and a half or inch of the impeller is at. And the second number is going to be your trailing edge. And then the number after that, sometimes there will be a plus 75 or a C75 or a plus 83. That third number is the hub size. And that hub size is more decided by what pump you're running. So there's a stock size pump, which this is a stock 155 millimeter Yamaha pump. And that's very small. I think these are maybe 70 millimeters. I'm not exactly even sure what those are. Your standard big hub mag pump would be 75. And then the extra large hub mag pumps are 83. So a smaller hub size will allow you to run a lower pitched impeller because you're moving more water. And as you get a little bit bigger hub, you actually have to go a little higher in the impeller pitch, generally speaking, because you're moving more water faster to get the same amount of volume of water going through. So what do the leading and the trailing edges actually do? So the leading edge of your impeller, the first, let's call it inch and a half or so, that is what is more or less going to affect the bottom end of your jet ski. Right off idle, how quick is it going to rev up? And if you're overloaded, your jet ski is going to feel really sluggish all over. It just won't really ever come to life. And if it's too loose, it's just going to feel like you're burning it up. Like you have a bunch of weeds in your impeller and it's just not going. It's making a lot of noise, but not going. So that's what the front is doing. So. If let's say your jet ski is really slow to rev up, that means you have too tall of a number. So the number on the front is too high. So what you'd want to do is bring that number down one or two degrees and then try again. Now on the other side, if as soon as you hit the throttle, the jet ski is just revving up, you know you don't have any air leaks and you know you don't have anything stuck in your intake tract, then what you'd probably want to do is make it a little steeper. So you'd want to have instead of let's call it a 10, Let's move that up to a 12 and see if it stops burning it. And then there's a lot of other things you can do to fine tune as well. Moving on to the trailing edge of the impeller, the trailing edge is actually going to be affecting more of the top end, mid to top end. So your max RPM is gonna be heavily decided by what pitch you're running in the last little bit of impeller edge here. So if you're not pulling enough RPM, then you want to make it a little shallower and make it from, let's call it a 15 down to a 13 and check your RPM again. And if you are totally revving out, hitting the rev limit or bouncing off the rev limit when you're riding across the lake, you're going to want to add a little more pitch to it, maybe add a degree or two and try again. Now a degree is actually a pretty sizable amount. So it's not a bad idea to do everything maybe a degree at a time. Once you think you're kind of close, then you could kind of move on to some other tuning aspects, but we'll get to that later. Now the third portion of this impeller that is important is the centerpiece here. I call this the root angle. I don't know if that's what everyone else calls it, but the middle two thirds of the impeller, obviously that can be different impeller to impeller. And that really, in my opinion, affects kind of the mid range of the impeller. How much hook does it have in the mid range when it's climbing RPMs? And that can make a big difference too in tuning for you know acceleration, the mid-range, and also overall RPM as well. So those are you know how the different aspects of your blade and how the blade angle affects it. And measuring your blade angle is pretty simple if you have one of these tools. 
it's basically just a cup and it has a bunch of numbers and these are all just angle numbers. So if you wanna check your angle, set the tool over the impeller and spin it until you have a line that matches the same angle as your impeller. So in this case, it looks like the leading edge of this impeller is right around 10 degrees. And then if you wanna measure the trailing edge, this one you just flip so it's closer to the edge, rotate it here until we have, uh, looks like 17 degrees on the trailing edge here. And if, we want to if I wanna measure the root angle, so to know, hey, how loaded is this impeller, then I'll spin it around to the middle, and it looks like this one is right around, I'm gonna call it 13 degrees in the middle. So that's just basics of how you measure an impeller and what the blades do. Now there's a couple different options with impellers when you're ordering them. Um, Scat Track, they would offer what's called a long blade option. So what that actually does, this is not a long blade. So what the long blade does is actually extend the nose of the impeller out and it wraps around further. What this does is it hooks it up more. So it's gonna be more loaded off the bottom, gonna be more hooked up. And that's good for high horsepower applications. Not so much for engines that don't make a lot of power down low especially. The second thing, that can be a different option. So the second option that you can do is what's called a thin blade. So this is a standard thickness impeller. This impeller is probably an eighth of an inch thick. It's not flexing at all while you're riding. It is solid. So if you get the option that's called a thin blade, what it actually does, and I have one here I can pull out, but they actually make the impeller substantially thinner on the side. So this impeller is probably a 32nd of an inch thick, maybe a sixteenth, it's about half the thickness. I don't know if it'll focus on that. So what the thin blade does is, once again, it just makes the impeller a little more efficient, hooks up better, and what actually, what I've heard it does in theory too, is when you get on the gas and on the throttle, as it starts to load down, some of these ones that are really thin will actually flex, and it will effectively raise the pitch as you're spinning it up and getting on the throttle and on the power. So it, it supposedly might even sort of act like a variable pitch impeller, but cannot confirm that because I'm not sure, but I have heard that. The bottom line is these are gonna give you a little more hookup as well. And this is also a long blade, so you can see the impeller blade wraps around a little further, almost up to the top of the end of the impeller there, whereas your standard impeller stops about an inch short of the top and it's got a little bit different shape as well on the nose of the blade versus this one is more flattened. So this right here is a thin blade, long blade impeller. So those are two options that you can add to impellers. Now the third thing that they offer with impellers is going to be cutback. So what cutback is, is it's how close your impeller sits back against the stator housing and back against these blades. So the closer it is to those blades, the more efficient your pump is running and the less it's going to spin. So if you're running an impeller that's cut back, it's going to spin less, it's going to be more loaded down. So if you move the impeller way back and it's almost touching that stator, you're going to be running a lower pitch as opposed to someone who's running one that's standard and it's in seven, eight millimeters away from those blades. So everything is correlating with each other. It's not just a number. It's not just the hub size. It's not just the cutback. It's everything together and everything gives or takes away from overall thrust and how loaded down your motor is going to be. So those are kind of the basics with your impeller. So there's other things you can also do to tune down the line. So if you ordered yourself a cutback impeller, say it was five millimeters cutback, or even if you didn't, you ordered a standard impeller, and you find that your impeller is too tight, it's not revving up enough off the bottom, and your overall RPM isn't quite where you want it to be. There are a few, couple things you can do to cheat it and get some fine tuning in, and if nothing else, even just to figure out which direction you should be going so that you can send it back, get it repitched. So the first thing that you can do if you think your pump is too tight and you want to try something different, what you can do is you can take the impeller off. And this is a Yamaha style. 
This tactic may not work the same on other brand pumps, but on Yamaha's, the impeller threads on to the drive shaft. So you can put these little shim washers in between the pump, the pump and the impeller. And what that does is pushes it forward. So let's say, just to kind of give you a, a little bit of an idea, if you shim your impeller a millimeter, it's probably gonna be like changing your pitch maybe a degree or so. So keep that in mind that it can kind of give you an idea, but it is also going to be overall. It's gonna affect it from bottom to top, not just the, not just the leading edge, not just the trailing edge. So that's a trick you can use to kind of do some fine tuning. So another trick you can do is going to be pump cones. So a stock pump, there's not really many options for pump cones. There's the one that comes on them and there's a little stubby one. So you can try the stubby. It's not very drastic, but if you're in the world where you have a mag pump, aftermarket pump, then there's actually adjustable cones. You can buy three different sizes. In most cases, this is for a 75 millimeter hub. You can get small, medium, large. So if you aren't sure where you are, throw in your impeller, start with the medium. If you're not sure if it's, hey, it's too loaded, it's too loose, go one way, see how it works. Then go the other way and see how it works and see, hey, do I need to go up and pitch, which would mean this one was better, or do I need to go down and pitch, which means that this one was better. So the smaller cone will loosen up your pump. The bigger cone will tighten up your pump. So if putting the big cone on makes it better, you may need to go up and pitch. If you put the small cone on and it's better, you may be over pitched and you may need to bring those numbers down a little bit. So that's another way that you can fine tune. So another thing that goes into effect here is also going to be your reduction nozzle size and steering nozzle size, which is just as effective of a tuning tool as anything else here. Now what you can do is open up your nozzles or you can have them smaller. Obviously, once you've opened it up, it's hard to go back, but I also wanna mention that going larger with the reduction nozzle is going to loosen up the pump, similarly to a smaller pump cone, because basically you're creating more volume space for the water to exit. So it's doing a similar thing to a pump cone. So stop thinking of a board nozzle as a performance mod in that there's one perfect number. That's not really the case. Um, you know, a lot of people will like to have the reduction nozzle and the steering nozzle within three to five millimeters of each other. The steering nozzle pretty much always being larger. Some people go a little bigger than that, some people less, but I think that's a pretty safe range where most people will say that's gonna work pretty well. So these are kind of your main ways to tune a pump. And I'll go back over it again. The ways to tune a pump are going to be pitch, spacing to the stator, nozzle size and pump cones. So those are your ways to tune and you can use all of them to fine tune and figure out what the absolute best setup is for you. I hope this video was useful so that you can get your setup dialed and go out there and take it to the next level. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.